is Lance Carl. Ariana Brawley. Brady Sullivan. Tyler Putnam. Tyler Wittenberg. Mary Louise Brummett. And Tara Brower. Big Sky Live. Welcome back, everyone, from a wonderful and well-needed spring break. How was your spring break, Tara? It was really good. Uh, me and my family actually went to Egypt and got to see some amazing things, the pyramids, temples. It was really, really fun. That's cool. How was yours? Um, it was fine. I just stayed at Missoula. And then I went to Spokane and had a dance competition. Cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, Brittany went through the halls of Big Sky to get some student perspective about this year's spring break. And of course, the scoop on what everyone did for the break. So let's go to Brittany. Lawrence, Kansas to Haskell University for the, it's a Native American program. Okay. For spring break, I'm not doing anything but being spontaneous. It's going to be awesome. All right. Spring break, I, uh, I, I mostly like to fish on spring break, you know, uh, in Idaho. I'm not doing much of anything on spring break, just sitting there mostly. For spring break, I'm going to go to Seattle and renew my passport. To do the cha-cha and um, my little oven mitts that I made myself. And... For spring break, I am going to Las Vegas. <laughs> Vegas, baby! Yeah! I'm going to be a track practice over spring break, so... What I'm going to Canada for spring break, and what I like about spring break is that you don't tell anybody that you're doing stuff in spring break, because, you know, yeah, it's spring break. Oh. I think spring break needs to be, like, four weeks long. Eating lots of cheese. I think it gives us a break where we can, like, I don't know, just do what we want and have fun. It gives us our, our brain a rest from all that hard work. It's such a boring town, and I think that spring break's like our chance to get out and go have fun and get some excitement in. Thanks, Brittany. You know, Mary, I think that a lot of people in general take for granted the beauty of the place that we live in. You know, I totally agree with you. Missoula is a wonderful place to grow up, and I can honestly say that sometimes I forget about it. You know, I do too. Our next segment showcases some of the spectacular scenes that surround us every day. So let's go to Chris. This gorgeous view of nature at its finest surrounds Missoula in every direction. Majestic mountains, wandering waters, Endless evergreens, continuous canyons, and superlative skies create an ambiance that is truly the essence of beauty.
Zulians value and respect the pristine simplicity of their environment. It is sincerely a privilege to live in Missoula. Next we have a commercial break. But I promise you don't want to miss out on this one. If you're eating, you might want to look away from this one. It might be a little unappetizing. So let's check it out. of garage bands and one of the most popular is Black Friday. All of the members are Big Sky students and they get a lot of publicity through talent shows and performances at Big Sky. They were a really good band but we've heard that they've broken up. Rhonda has gone in depth to figure out the mystery behind the brand, band's breakup so let's check it out. The band Black Friday comprised of Big Sky students, Madison Lynn, Corey Lemers, Jordan Byer, and Tanner Dubay broke up, but the friends managed to save. Jordan, Corey, and Tanner decided to tell us a little bit about Madison. Really tired of party. Okay, Madison, Madison is the most lazy person that I know. Um, he's really the inspiration for all of our songs he wrote. But he's a good guy anyways. And he did a lot of work in the band. He wrote most of the songs and stuff. So, yeah. He kind of keeps his distance from everybody. Like Madison, Jordan contributed a lot to the band. Here's what they say. Jordan is probably one of my favorite people ever because he, he's cool. Jordan, um, I guess he's kind of the new guy of the band. Jordan is like a rad fellow. Um, he's pretty much a screwy guy. He does a bunch of dumb stuff, you know. Gets me in trouble. Yeah. He uh, he likes to uh, play play his git fiddle pretty pretty yeah, rad. This is what the guys have to say about Dewey. Uh, I don't know. He sometimes enjoys uh, gentle massages in the company of. Jackrabbits, but Tanner is our drummer. He's really good. He's um, just really funny, ecstatic, with a lot of energy. Good guy. Yeah. Okay, Tanner. Tanner is a short goon who plays the drums, and he thinks he's cool, but he's not. And he's one of my best buds. And finally, the boys want to talk about Corey Demers. Corey is pretty much the epitome of emo. It's just like a black heart. If you could see his heart, it would be black, and not from smoking. It, it would be black from death, and hatred, and he screams. Corey is, uh, Corey's pretty emo, but, but that doesn't, that's not, not, not bad. Good guy. He's pretty punk rock too, I guess, I don't know. And now the band just being normal boys. I'm gonna throw up the milk. You missed. Oh, I thought the first kid over there. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Should be. He puts the lotion on the red button, Reggie. Thank you, Ani. Thank you, Rhonda. Next, we would like to discuss a very touchy subject among Big Sky students. We would like to talk about the article that the Hellgate Journalism class published in their school paper. For those of you who don't know about this, the Hellgate Journalism class published a nasty, rude, and unprovoked article cri criticizing our high school, Big Sky. We just want to let everyone know that this journalism class has ethics when it comes to other Missoula County schools. We haven't ever deliberately slammed another rival school. Even Tyler, a political radical, can exhibit the same code of ethics that our school does. Tyler has put together a humorous rebuttal segment. Yes, you all know Tyler and his Wittenberg factors. 
This one might hit a little closer to home. Keani, along with Tyler Wittenberg. How you doing out there, people? We're here from inside Big Sky, the biggest prison in Missoula, at least according to the Hellgate Lance. Yes, we have no windows leading outside. Oh, wait, what are those? Hmm, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and I can't see the other ones because they're out of my line of sight, but that's a lot of windows, it's so. Two dozen. It's almost two dozen. You guys are full of it. So today on Big Sky Live, what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss all of their rumors, every lie they spread one by one. As you may or may not know, in the Hellgate Lance article, they commented on the read posters. The read posters that were done by one of our very friends, Mike Canope, who did it for a, gra a graphics design project. You hear me? He did it for a school project. Yeah. All right? You know, we do projects here at Big Sky. You know, stuff you do for a grade. Yeah, we're a little too busy doing projects to go around playing James Bond. Without the women, no less. That's right. And I would also like to add that I think those read posters are kind of cool. And they put some handsome people on them. I know. I'd really love to wrap my legs around this handsome devil. Hey, nice poster. Hey, hey thanks. thank you. Yeah. See, he knows. Yeah. He knows. He reads. What's the illiteracy rate in your school? Yeah. Like, a bunch. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. Come on, let's Probably like 3,000 million percent. Well, Tyler, I don't know about you, but I love the fact that this school doesn't have any friggin' stairs to be climbing. Good call. Yeah. Well, Tyler, I don't know about you, but I'm just ecstatic that we're not downtown. Oh, I know. I mean, look. We're right here. We have a big parking lot. Right there's outside the doors. Right, right outside the doors. There's lots of places to park. Lots. Lots and lots. So many places. You're jealous. You know you're jealous. That's the only reason you wrote the bloody article in the first place. Is you're jealous. Jealous. And we don't have to worry about getting hit by cars when we walk in. We don't have to worry about bums trying to get money from us. We don't have to worry about anything other than how much the school day is probably going to suck because school sucking is universal. You should have kept that in mind as well. You guys don't even have your own parking lot. How, what kind of school doesn't have their own parking lot? That's like not having your own classroom, man. It was a poorly writ written article, am I right? I mean, oh, well, let's just say it had more lies in it than a Michael Moore movie and a Bush State of the Union put together. That is a lot of lies. Yes, that is. And not to mention how poorly written it was. I mean, all they did was they came here. It, it, it had the grammar of a two-year-old monkey. Yes, yes. You know something else I like, Brandon? What's that? I like the fact that we have really good security measures at this school to keep out intruders. I do admire that. Hellgate, you're right. You really need to tell us how to be cool. How are you guys just so cool? Wow, you guys seriously have nothing better to do than to say that our school sucks pretty much? Wow, get a life. So there you have it, right from the horse's mouth. Here at Big Sky, we are so cool that we've got people doing rad guitar solos. Wow, 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 wow! So reporting honestly from under the big sky, I'm Tyler Wittenberg. I'm Brandon Piani. You take it easy, big sky. And we are not filthy liars. Unlike you. <laughs> that was good. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> Next we have another commercial break for some teenage insurance. I guess since we're crazy drivers. I don't know. Let's check it out. You have a teenage driver who has no clue what they're doing. Oh my gosh, did you guys hear about that guy dating that one girl? Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh my god, guys, lotion. Oh, no, I got it all over my shirt. Wait, wait, wait. I got it everywhere. Oh my god, I'll call you for that. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, are you guys okay? No, no I have lotion all over my shirt. Guys, so I'm so lucky to get out of that crash. Oh, it's so scary. I couldn't even I believe it. I know. Can you believe how fast 
to get your car fixed, though. I know, that was so impressive. Bad. I'm so glad my, God got that, my dad got that team insurance. Yeah, I know, you. luckily, all that lotion <laughs> came out of my shirt. Yeah, I mean, I was so glad. Off my face. Yeah. Good. That worked. And my boyfriend didn't even get mad at me. That works. We will head back to Tyler for another Wittenberg factor. This is his 14th factor, which is amazing. Yeah. We were told this factor is the part two to previous Iran interviews. <laughs> also the first interview with President Bush himself for a year. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Wittenberg Factor here in our spin tight studio. Tonight on the Talking Points Memo, a video has been circulating that proves that President Bush knew about Hurricane Katrina, but chose not to do anything about it. Let's take a look. Excuse me, Mr. President. What are you doing on my couch? I, Mr. President, I don't think that's exactly a map issue would be worried. Never interrupt me when I am reading Superman on my couch. Mr. President, I'm sorry. I'd just like to let you know that we've just gotten word that there's a huge hurricane right off the coast of New Orleans. Well, that's no big deal. Call Superman. Let him take care of it. Last month, I started interviewing Hollywood celebrities about what we should do about Iran. Tonight, we have Mr. T and Sylvester Stallone. So, Mr. Stallone, what do you make of this whole mess? He's not here yet. What's that? I said he's not here yet. Okay, I'm told Mr. Stallone is running a little late. <laughs> Mr. T, President Bush's approval ratings continue to drop. Do you hate him as well? No, I don't hate Bush, but I pity the fool. So if there were a war with Iran, what would your prediction be? Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. Okay, thank you. It appears that Mr. Stallone is still having trouble getting here. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time in almost a year, the Wittenberg Factor has President Bush on the show. Welcome to the show, Mr. President. Thanks, Factor. It's always a pleasure. I'm very proud of that fact. Now, Mr. President, I have a question for you about Portgate. Go for it, Factor. What were you thinking? Look, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like I gave him 31 Baskin Robbins. Huh? Look, the ports are nothing. If we have to, we can set up blockades. We can do any number of things. But with the 31 Baskin Robbins, that could damage freedom itself. Damage freedom in Baskin Robbins? What the hell are you talking about? Hey, 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 did you know Cheney shot someone? <laughs> of course I have. It's been the only thing in the news for the past month, and it's getting a little nauseating. But anyway, in a speech a couple weeks ago, you said that you're looking forward to eating Indian mangoes. What's with that? What? Well, I wanted to make them feel better. I mean, we did steal their land. We stole American Indians' land. You're talking about eating Asian Indian mangoes. <laughs> There's only one kind of Indian, dummy. Yeah. Plus, I love Indian mangoes. And I mean, I love Indian mangoes. I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set. Mr. President, thanks for coming on the show. No, Tyler, I'm sorry I'm late, you know? Listen, don't worry about it. So Iran is building nuclear weapons. How do you feel about that? I'm afraid, all right? You want to hear me say it? You want to break me down? All right, I'm afraid. For the first time in my life, I'm afraid. Calm down, Mr. Stallone. Some people are saying that this threat from Iran isn't even real. Nothing is real! Okay, I don't know about that one, uh, but Mr. Stallone, if... President Bush were to say that he's going to invade Iran, what would you say? Go for it. But enough about politics. What about Rocky VI? When are you going to get that out? It's been years. Why are you pushing me? What? So why are you pushing me? I haven't done anything to you. Because it's been 16 years since the last Rocky movie, and now you're going to put another one out? Why don't you just give up? Let it go. Let it go. That's it! Get off my show! But I didn't do anything! That's all the time we have for this edition of The Wittenberg Factor. I'm Tyler Wittenberg, and the spin is that away. Thanks, Tyler, for yet another Wittenberg factor. Unfortunately, we have to go to another commercial break. But you want to stay tuned for this one, too. And this might help some of you Hellgate students. So listen up. God 
Look at that cool shirt. Oh, cool. Cool shirt? This is a cool shirt. Appropriate fit. I'm wearing a cool shirt. <laughs> hey, dude. It's okay. I know you're wearing a geek shirt. I'm what? Here. Paul Geek. Oh, yes. See, this morning I discovered I was wearing a cool shirt. Yes, it was very humiliating to me. What? You say you can give me a nerdy shirt if I come over to the company. Oh, that's great. Thanks. That's really cool. I mean, not cool. Okay, bye. Hey, welcome to Geeko Insurance. How may I help you? Uh, yes, I was calling a few minutes earlier about a shirt. Oh, yeah, we have you right here. Here you go. Here. Thanks a lot, guys. You saved my self-esteem. It's our job. Well, thank you for turning, tuning in again. <laughs> also, to fill you in on some upcoming events, our journalism class is going to San Francisco for a journalism convention. Our class has worked really hard to raise all of the money ourselves, and we are really excited about the trip. Not only are we going to a convention, we're planning on viewing San Francisco's traditional tourist spots. But thanks, and we'll see you all next time. Okay. Yes. Good work.